Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. So today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna take you to the seminar room and we're gonna go behind the scenes and I'm gonna show you how these videos get edited. So if you have any interest in learning video editing, you will find this interesting. If you don't, you might wanna skip this episode, but let's go take a look. What I wanna do is I wanna give you a very small little preview from my course of some of my training and I wanna show you I want to take about 20 minutes right now and walk you through the four main steps that I go through when I'm editing my own content. Okay, so I want to walk you through these four steps. I'm about to compress about a week's worth of content into 20 minutes. So we are going to go fairly quick, but I want to give you a broad overview and show you that even if you've never done this before, you can learn it. Okay, so what we're going to do now, I'm looking down here at my laptop. We're going to go into something called Adobe Premiere Pro. Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, I'm going to get rid of everything you see here, and I'm gonna show you what you're gonna see for the first time when you open up Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, Adobe, I'm sure you've heard of that company before. They make products like Photoshop, but they also have about 50 other softwares. And the, the Premiere uh, video editing software is Adobe Premiere Pro. It's a very popular program. Um, it's used in a lot of movies. It's used on a lot of series, even on Netflix. So it's an incredible program and you can get a seven day free trial. If you go to Google and type in Adobe Premiere Pro, seven day free trial, you can download it. So when you do download it, you open it up and you're going to see this. Now, I know when you see this for the first time, it's kind of intimidating, like where do you even begin? They've got all these different boxes, what are they? So let me explain. So over here on the left, this is your media bin. This is where you're going to put all your video files, your B-roll or supporting footage, um, music, sound effects, all of that stuff, all the little building blocks, okay? That's gonna go into here. So you're gonna download them from online or take them off your camera or your phone and you're going to import them, okay, into Premiere Pro. I'll show you how you do that in just a moment. This big rectangle here, this is your timeline. Now, the way that your timeline works is we're going to drag our clips, our video clips onto our timeline. We're going to drag the music onto the timeline and we're going to be able to move things around. We're going to be able to cut things up, remove mistakes but this is where our video will start to take form. And the video will show up here in the top right in this big box, this is our preview monitor. So how our video is looking so far will be shown here. All the stuff over here on the left, forget about that for now, okay? We'll come back to that later. Now, it's important to note that Premiere Pro, it's got a whole lot of features. You don't need to know most of them, okay? If you know 5% of them really well, the most important 5%, you can get by and you can do professional videos. Okay, there's, I've been doing this now for four plus months. There's still so many things that I don't know how to do, but I know enough to create really good videos. So you can pick this up uh, fast without knowing every little detail. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to import our footage. Now, uh, the very best camera that you're ever gonna own is one of these things, your phone. And I'm sure you've got a smartphone, whether it's an iPhone, a Galaxy, whatever you have, this is the best camera that you're ever going to own. It shoots 4K footage and it's incredibly versatile, portable, so you can start practicing. You can get footage from your phone, put it onto your laptop or your computer. And the first thing we're gonna do, see where it says import media to start. I'm going to double click on that. Now I've already got my footage and there's three clips. And this was an episode that I edited about two weeks ago. This is about an event that I went to in Fiji. Okay, so I'm just telling a story. So there's three clips and I'm going to select those three clips. I'm gonna click on import. Okay, now here they are in our project bin. We're going to click, hold down our mouse, drag them onto the timeline, and now you can see them. The whole timeline now comes to life. So let's go through this one by one. So you see where it says V1, V2, V3. V1 stands for video one. These are your video tracks. And the way that your video tracks work is it's kind of like you're looking down at a sheet, a sheet of paper or a stack of papers on your desk. You're gonna see the top layer. You're not gonna see all the layers underneath. So 
with your video, whatever is showing on the highest layer, so for example, if I drag this up to V2, and there's something down here on V1, you're only gonna see what's on V2. So whatever is highest, that's what the viewer will see in the video. Now, this second part, this is your audio. So I can expand this, and you see all these waves. If I hit play or spacebar, experience. You can watch that's my voice, so that's why you see all the sound waves going up and down. So you've got A1, A2, A3. So for example, A1 might be our vocals, A2 might be music, and A3 might be sound effects, okay? So if, we, uh, if we're going to zoom out, we just hit minus on our keyboard, and plus is zoom in, zoom out like that. And by the way, you can resize any of these rectangle blocks, okay? So if you click, hold down, and drag up, and my Premiere Pro is running a bit slow right now because I've got so many different things open, but we can resize anything and everything, okay? So when I film this, I know that this one here comes first. So we're going to move this one. I'm just gonna click, hold down, move it back here, and, and I spent nine. that is the first clip, okay? And then this is the second clip, and then the third clip. So we can click, hold down, and draw a square rectangle, select everything, and now we can drag the whole thing around on our timeline. Okay, so stage one of the editing process is we need to go through and remove any obvious mistakes. So what you're seeing here, if we zoom in by hitting the plus, this is the raw footage with all my mistakes. So I'm gonna hit play and then just have a listen. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hey guys, so, I'm so when I'm doing that clapping and going one, two, three, one, two, three, I'm checking my audio level. So obviously we don't want that, that in the final episode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to double click, expand this audio track so I can see the vocals better and see this pause, that's the gap, right? Where I say three. Hey guys. So where I, there's no talking, then I say, hey guys. So that's the start. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, see all these funny looking symbols. This one here that looks like a razor, we're gonna click on that, that is our razor tool. And then we hover over where we wanna do the cut and we click once. And what that does is it cuts that clip right down the middle. So then we come back, grab our selection tool. So with our selection tool, we can highlight any clip we want. We're gonna highlight this one and we're gonna hit delete on the keyboard. Okay, so now it's gone. So if I hit play or spacebar, listen. Hey guys, so on today's episode, I wanna tell you a story. I wanna tell you a now story about Now to speed this up, we can hit L on our keyboard. Just like that. And it changed my life. But to pause it, we hit spacebar. In the ways that you might expect. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Okay, so that's the end of the first clip. And then what I did is I recorded the same line about two or three times because I, I wanted to make sure it was perfect. So now we're gonna get our razor tool over here and we're going to hover where that last word finished. I'm gonna delete, come back, get our selection tool. And by the way, there are keyboard shortcuts for these tools so you can go faster, but I wanna keep everything uh, as simple as possible. In my course, we go through these things very slowly, much more slowly than what we're doing right now. And I explain each step by step. So this first clip, that's now good, okay? It's, hey guys, it's, so it's uh, one or two sentences, and that's gonna be our first opening shot. So you would go through and you would do that for the entire video. You would remove all the different mistakes. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's obviously not what we want in the final video, so we need to cut this out. Now, Another way that we can, we can cut this out is we can grab the end of it, so see how it turns red, and I can click and hold down and I can drag that in, okay? And then that way I can remove all my mistakes. So I know that what I just removed there, that was all but mistakes. I remember getting on a plane from... See, that's another mistake. So here's what happened. And then when I say, so here's what happened, that is the, the actual start. So I'm just going to click, drag, and now we start exactly so what where we want, okay? So hit that minus key on your keyboard, zoom back out. So you would go through and you would do that for the entire video, removing all the mistakes that your subject makes. Now, of course, you don't need to be in the video. So if you're camera shy or you don't wanna be the main subject, 
the point of this is that you learn how to edit video. So in all my videos that I do on my vlog, I'm always the main subject. But there's plenty of people who just edit videos as a profession and they never want to be in their own videos. So you can practice filming anything around the house, the garden, the street outside, your city, and then you can focus on just editing landscapes and other things. It doesn't have to be uh, yourself. So you would go through and you would remove any obvious mistakes in that narration. That's stage one. Stage two is we need to add B-roll or supporting footage. So if we're telling a story in our video, rather than just showing the subject explaining it, we want to paint a picture. Like you've got to look at yourself as you're, you're an artist and you've got a blank piece of canvas and what you're creating here is art. You're, you're creating, you're starting with a blank timeline and then you are creating something totally unique and you have full control over the creative process. So B-roll is when we're going to stack footage on top onto video track number two and three and so on so that when the viewer is watching the video, we're really telling a story and we're actually showing different things that we're referring to. We're making it more interesting, more engaging. So we need to go and get B-roll. Now, I recommend you get B-roll from a website called Videoblocks, uh, also known as Storyblocks, Videoblocks, Storyblocks.com, same, same company. And for about 20 bucks a month, something like that, uh, you can get a subscription and you can access thousands of high quality b-roll clips so for example if your subject is telling a story about a dog you could go to storyblocks and type in dog and you would find hundreds of clips of all kinds of dogs doing all kinds of different things you could download them some would go for a few seconds some might go for a minute and then you can import them into premiere pro and you can use them in your video now in my course, I also tell you some free video stock uh, websites where you don't have to pay for the videos, uh, the stock footage. But Storyblocks, it's, it's a great one, okay? So I've already gone ahead and I've downloaded it to my laptop. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to double click on our project bin here. We're gonna come up to where I downloaded it and see this folder named B-roll. I've got a bunch of clips in here. Um, we're not gonna use everything for now, but let's have a look at a few of them. So let's have a look at this one. This is a drone shot that I found on Storyblocks. Okay, so this is not my footage, but this gives you an idea of the quality of footage that you can find. This goes for about a minute, and we're not gonna use it all, but we can certainly use a portion of it. So we're gonna use that. Um, this one here, this is some drone footage that we got of Estorios Beach, which is right in front of the resort. Now, later on in this presentation, I'm gonna share with you how you and a guest can come and stay at a resort on this very beach you're looking at, seven nights, six nights, uh, sorry, seven days, six nights, have everything included, all, all inclusive. Okay, so I'll get to that in just a bit, but that's a nice shot. So we're gonna use that. And then this shot here, this is of the drone flying through the restaurant, okay, out towards the swimming pool. So we can also use that. So that's three clips. We're gonna select all three of these. We're gonna click on import. Now they're gonna show in our, in our little project bin. So I'm gonna click, hold down, drag them onto our timeline, onto V2, and here they are. Now notice when I hit spacebar or play, and it changed. you're gonna hear me, but you don't see me. You see the, the stock footage, the drone shot, because it's stacked on top, okay? so. If I draw a square around these, or a rectangle, and I drag them, now Life, you're not, not seeing that the... clip, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim down this B-roll to exactly what we want, and we only want the very best of the best. So when you're shooting B-roll or using B-roll, you're probably only, only gonna use like 5% of the entire thing, and that's okay. So from this one minute clip, we might use maybe three seconds. So do you see what I did there? I just grabbed the edges, I pulled them in, and so now we're just using this tiny little selection. Okay, that will be one clip. Here's the next one, okay? So we don't wanna use this entire drone shot of the beach, but we just want a part. So why don't we use from here, as it flies over this little island thing, 
and then use about two seconds of it. So now we have that little block and then this third one over here, I hit spacebar and the drone is flying through. You'll notice in the bottom left corner there's some powder. Okay, that's to get rid of ants. So we certainly don't want that in our, in our shot. This camera gear, we, we don't want that in the shot either. So maybe from about here onwards for maybe two, three seconds, that's good. So we hit spacebar. Yes, and even, even shorter than that, that's fine. So we drag this over and then we're gonna grab this clip, click, hold down, drag to the left. Never really been. And now let's, let's play that and see how and it looks it so far. My life but not in the ways that you So here's the expect. intro. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. And then we cut to this epic drone shot. Now, we're missing something here. What are we missing? Music, we need music. We need music to bring this to life. So what you're gonna do is go to a website called epidemicsound.com. And for a low subscription, I think it's also under 20 bucks a month, you can use royalty, royalty free there are thousands of different songs in all kinds of different categories. You can search based on beats per minute, moods, all kinds of different things. And they also have sound effects. So if your subject was telling a story about uh, like the dog, for example, you could find a dog barking. Or if, if, like in this episode, I'm telling a story about getting on a plane, I could go and get a plane sound effect and have that in the background for the audio. So we need to go and get music. Now I've already gone ahead and downloaded some music from Epidemic Sound. So I want, to, I want you to listen to these two songs. Listen to this first song and ask yourself, would you put this below the, uh, those opening epic drone shots? Do you think that it would fit the episode? I'm gonna turn this up a bit. No. Okay, that, that sounds like elevator music. It sounds like something you would hear in a nursing home. So that's not really going to suit our mood. So what about the second song? Okay, so it's a little bit more upbeat. It's got a bit more energy to it. That sounds pretty good. Okay, okay, so that can work. So we're gonna say yes, we're gonna say import. So now we've imported that into our little project bin. You'll see it down there. I'm going to drag that across onto audio level two, A2. Now we can start it as soon as we begin the episode. We can have it from the very beginning or we can have silence except the voice at the very start and then the music slowly comes in. Let's, let's listen to that, okay? Fiji and it changed my life but not in the ways that you now, you'll notice the music is very loud. It's drowning out my, my voice. So what we can do is, by the way, I, I just double click on the track like that. That's how I expand that. So this line is the audio level. If I click and I hold down, see the decibel level there? So I can drag this down to say there, negative 15 decibels. And now I hit play I'd and listen. That's, what we're going to be talking about That's much today. better. So already that looks and sounds much better, but did you hear that crescendo in the music? Okay, the melody really picks up. So what we wanna do when, when we're editing, we wanna try and time everything together. If we do a, a cut or a transition, if we can do it on the beat of the song, it just looks and sounds better. So with that crescendo in the melody, what if, what if we have that right on the cut from the subject to this drone shot. Let's try and slide it a little bit to the left and then we play it back, we listen to it Talking and we look today. at it. Okay, so it comes in a little bit too late. We're gonna move that to the left, watch it again and listen. I'd expect, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Perfect, okay, good. And do you, do you hear how, I mean, it just makes it sound and look so much better. The music suits that epic drone shot. Okay, now if you listen closely here, you'll hear another beat, listen. There. So why don't we try and make sure this transition is exactly on the beat. Hit. It's pretty close, so let's punch in. We hit the plus on our keyboard. And you can see with the sound waves there, that is the beat. 
right there. So what I'm going to do is that clip, I'm going to shorten it and then I'm going to extend the one that comes before it. So that transition, that cut there, that's directly on top of the beat and it looks and sounds like this. Okay. Much better. Okay, good. So here's what happened. And now what we need to do is we need to make that music, we need to make the music increase in volume during this opening shot and then decrease when the voice comes back. So the way that we're gonna do that is we can add these little nodes or like keyframes onto the audio. So this is your overall audio level of the song. I'm gonna hit command on my keyboard. I'm gonna click once, see that little blue dot. I'm gonna hit command again, hold it down and click. And then uh, same thing here, one here and one here. And then what we're going to do is I click, hold down and I can drag up my audio levels like that. And I can do the same thing with this one here. So the music now, it's going to be quiet That's and raise in volume. Today. See how it gets louder? And then we come here. So here's what happens. And then we can keep on fading that out if we want. Okay, and we can actually add in a few more of those and then the music can disappear plane, completely. from Perth, Australia to Sydney and then Sydney to okay. Nandi in Fiji. So now the music's gone and maybe we have peace and quiet in the background uh, for 10 seconds and then we might introduce a new song. So we could shorten this whole song because you're not hearing it from there on anyway. Now and now there's no music. So that would be the next stage. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to do color. Now, color is really what separates uh, videos that look amateur from those that look professional. And color is enormous. There are entire uh, professions that it's dedicated on color. So for example, when you watch a big Hollywood blockbuster or your, fav your favorite Netflix series, someone or a team of people, their entire job is to focus on color. So for example, if you saw the movie Joker starring Joaquin Phoenix, the color of that entire movie was very unique, very specific and, and very deliberate. And it was very carefully chosen because the color has an impact on how us as the audience is interpreting the story. So, for example, if we want a really warm image, we might have a lot more oranges and everything's warmed up. But if we want a lifeless, uh, dull image and we want our audience to see that there's not much life in this world that they're seeing on, on the video, we might drain all the colors out. We might have a lot more blues and grays. So color can really make a big difference. Now, what you're looking at here, the color, it looks all right, okay, but we're gonna see if we can make it better. So what we're gonna do is, and again, I just wanna stress, if, if you're lost at this point, if I'm going really fast and you're already thinking, I could never do that, keep in mind, I'm showing you about a week's worth of learning in my course. Normally we would take our time with this and I'm compressing it into about 15 minutes. So I don't expect you to, to understand this the first time you see it. You've got to learn this, you've got to see this several times and be practicing. And when you go through my course, I'm constantly emphasizing that, okay, I've shown you how to do something, now you go and practice it. Now go and spend 15 minutes to go and practice it because that's the best way you're gonna learn. And by the time you get to the end of it, over 90 days, uh, you will be decent. If you've been practicing all the way, you'll, you'll get good at this. But we're gonna be looking for something called Lumetri Color. Okay, and this is where we can do a lot of different things to the color. Now the color of this shot, it's not so bad. I mean, it, it looks all right. Uh, my shirt looks nice and bright and there's the greens, it looks nice, but we can make it much better. So the first thing that we're going to do is see where it says WB selector, that's your white balance selector. And you wanna look for something very white in your image. Sometimes you have something really white, other times you gotta find something as close to white as possible, like this gray back here, but I happen to be wearing a white t-shirt, so when I click on that, Premiere Pro will automatically adjust the temperature and the tint, just like it did now, and this is what it looks like after, and this is what it looked like before. So that's before, 
and this is after. So it's a small change, very subtle, but the subtle changes make all the difference in the world. Now we can keep on increasing the warmth and you'll see that the image becomes very orange. So that doesn't look so good. So we wanna make things that look good to the eye, they look uh, somewhat realistic. So I'm just gonna leave the temperature there. Down here is contrast. Now contrast is what that is. Every color on the spectrum, whether it's red, green, blue, pink, whatever it is, lays somewhere between pure black and pure white. So what contrast does is it's going to pull down the shadows, like all these shadows you see uh, back here in this arch, it's gonna pull them down and make them even darker. And the whites, it's gonna brighten them up and make them even more white. So watch what happens when I increase the contrast you'll see that this tunnel back here is getting darker and you'll see that the whites become, or the highlights become much brighter. Now that's probably too much, so we're gonna scale that back. Now we can also come down here. By the way, each one of these I go through very slowly in my course and I show you what each one does. So you will learn this step by step. I know it looks like a lot the first time you see it. I felt the same way, but it's like learning anything. You look at it for the first time it looks complicated, but you practice. See down here where it says vignette. This is where we can add some shadowy effects in the corners so that we make this center area seem more bright and draw the viewer's attention to it. So when I bring this down, look what happens to the corner. So that's after, before, after, before. Okay, now you might like that, maybe you don't. I'm gonna make it more subtle, but that's, basic color correction. Now if we come up here, we can see this is what it looks like after, and this is what it looks like before. After, before. After definitely looks a lot better. So that's what we did with the color. Now we can do a whole lot more than that. And in my course, I show you what you can do. You can do some pretty amazing things. For example, we can isolate just the skin. Okay, we could isolate just the skin and we can change everything else. And that's important because when you're changing colors, the one thing that you don't wanna change too much is skin, because if skin starts to get too pink or purple or green, it, it'll start to look unnatural. And that's the difference between amateur videos and more professional videos. Um, they don't make anything look unnatural unless it's really intentional. Okay, so that is color correction. Now, we would go through shot by shot and we would look for different ones that we can, we can fix and we can make better. And in my course, I show you different ways that you can copy and paste uh, color correction so you can, you can speed up everything. You can make things go much faster. But uh, you would need to go through each, each different shot and just make sure the colors look really good. So for example, this beach here, let's increase the contrast and watch what happens. Okay, we really bring out these blues more in the ocean the greens in the vegetation and the volcanic sand here on Estorios Beach, we also bring that out. If we grab this white balance, we find something white in the sky and you'll see that it just increases the warmth a little bit. We can crank that up, make it look more like it's sunset, okay? So that's color correction. So you would go through, you would keep on doing that to each shot. And the good thing is when you do it to one, one clip, like this clip, it's not just this one frame, of course, it's the entire clip. So everything you see, all of this would get changed. Okay, so that's how you would do color correction. So I've just compressed about a week's worth of training in my course into maybe 15 minutes. So if you're lost at this point, don't feel bad. Uh, when you go through my course, step by step, we take things much slower and with practice, you will get it. Okay, you will learn this skill just as I did. And it doesn't matter if you've never done it before. My course is designed for people who've never done this before in their entire life. So that's the editing process. Now I really had to rush through everything there. So if I went a bit too fast or you don't understand everything in my course, I really break it down to the basics and we go through it much more slowly. Now, if you have any interest in getting my course, there should be a link somewhere below, but learning how to edit your own videos 
it's one of those in-demand skills and it's just really useful. So if you wanna get started, click the link below, get in touch with me and I can get you set up. Okay, that's it for today and I'll see you tomorrow.